Alright, hopefully this is working. I might have to adjust sound levels. Allow me to remind you that an epidemic of unknown origin has already eradicated a few genuinely distinctive towns in the northern part of the country. The cause and circumstances of these tragic events remain uncertain. There is a lot that we cannot explain yet. It appears as though the plague has a mind of its own, as if it is driven by some irrepressible will. Why else has no one managed to fight it successfully? Why does it target the most precious aspects of our existence? The sand plague picks its victims fastidiously, and the same principle always draws it back to whoever tries to oppose it. Surprisingly, we've yet to hear a single word from the powers that be. Okay, interesting start. <coughs> we begin with the burial of a child. Uh, there is no loaded game, because this is the first time I've run this game. So let's do a new one. So, it's all about trickery to you? Wherever have you come from? Okay, I immediately forgot about... Oh, there is no subtitles option. Unless I'm just blind. No. <gasps> no, I'm not. Uh, bump that up then. What else? Nope. Okay. No. No. I detest trickery. But if we ourselves are to suffer deception, our hands are no longer tied. Where are we? Well, the muscular contraction is there. Means you're already inside of him. This must be one of the ventricles right here. What a silly place. It's stuffed. So it's not real for now? I don't think it has started yet. Does it matter what it's made of? It's definitely struggling. We need to perform Sectio Transversalis. Cut the wall. There's no other way out. What else is there to do? I know what to do. Those who favor hard logic and direct action are bound to be misguided. Only a miracle can set us free without us having to destroy something. And I can do miracles. Just let me. Will you please be quiet? You're a liar and a thief. Who is going to believe you when you keep lying to yourself? The truth is my shepherd. Whatever happens, I will find answers, and justice will be restored. I will perform the operation. Medica Morbo Ative. Don't you go all bossy on me, clever clogs. You will act justly, but your justice will blind you and become his demise. This calls for the gentle hand of a surgeon. Step aside, 
both of you. Your gentle hands are used to killing, not giving life. You will inevitably do harm. As for Brainy, he has no regard for casualties at all. Neither of you knows compassion. Yeah. All right, I need to. I'm gonna adjust the levels. Also, <coughs> I'm gonna turn up the game volume. It might make me more difficult to hear in some cases, but in that case, I could just turn it down in the game. Also, I'm noticing a little bug where my mouse is coming outside of the full screen window. Uh, hopefully, that will be able to go away at some point. Um, because uh, if not, this is going to be interesting. Um, that might be too much. Actually, I can just turn down the music of the game. Whoa. Okay. Let's do 15%. It seems unlikely that we'll get along well, but there's only one truth. Any choice is right as long as it's willed. That's the truth of the matter. Only the heart will show you the right choice. I feel like I have Stop to take notes. Stop thinking about yourselves. Think of the sick. He's in pain. I can't see it yet, but I can feel it. It's not even a trap. It's a grave. Subipsum funisumus. Can't say I hold a soft spot for it. I can see that. You're full of hate. Stuffed or not, it's breathing. I can hear it. It can be healed rather than killed. You mean you won't become a killer? But you will. Mark my word, that's exactly what will happen. But I can avoid it. No, we won't ever get along. I suggest we be on our way. The sooner the better. Off we go then? Let's go. The clock is ticking. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Oh, okay. It's not a fade to black. Um... So, first off, that girl's voice actor, voice actor really pulls off the creep factor. Um, I get the feeling they are uh, talking about us, the player. Uh, hello, Kane. Uh, this is game about a plague, and that is about all I know. The introduction started with there is a plague ravaging some towns, and the powers that be haven't said anything. And then we were dumped into this theater where the little girl and the boy and the guy... Um, which is how I have written them on my notepad here. Uh, we're talking about presumably how to heal plagued people. The little girl talks about uh, heart and emotion and uh, how there's, there's going to be death involved in this. Uh, the kid was more about like, oh, I think we could like solve the right way. Like there's, there's a way to do it without death and the surgeon. Uh, the guy is more about uh, trying to do it precisionly and delicately. Um, I have heard rumors about this game. Oh. <coughs> I could be a bachelor, uh, Haruspex, or a changeling. Oh. I cannot, cannot be the changeling. Uh, the history of humanity witnessed a number of catastrophes that have demonstrated, without a shadow of a doubt, the pettiness of human achievement and the triumph of the incredible evil Out outbreaks of infectious disease that have from time to time wiped out towns and cities off the map are undoubtedly among those however spartan virtuous the people caught up in these destructive events have repeatedly come to the conclusion that there is no use trying to fight the circumstances the best you can do is bite the bullet and cope with your losses this is the story of a person who has managed to work a miracle and defeat a seemingly unvanquishable foe <coughs> Uh, the Haruspex. Haruspex? Haruspex. I don't know. How do they call upon the Menku, the faithful of a warden kin, known by their hands for they are butchers, known by their eyes for they are surgeons, they who follow the lines, they who are the leaders of the kin, they who speak to Udurgs, they who know the secret art of Haruspexy, what is a Haruspex? Reading the future in the future, reading the future in the entrails, 
he knows that a body bears semblance to the universe. His scalpel follows the lines of the body. His steps follow the lines of a kid's fortune. A Harispex that can tell a true line from a false one is entrusted with power. A Harispex who is uh, confused by his path gets buried in a deep black flesh of the earth. This is the story of a person who has avoided contra contradiction, eager to rip a doomed life apart, masterfully fulfilling his true purpose in the process. Oh, okay, so these are the three people that we're talking. Uh, the, the girl, the kid, and the guy. Uh, I'm going to go with the kid. This guy is uh, confused by his path. Is I'm probably going to be very confused by my path, so hopefully I'm just going to bite the bullet and cope. Daniel Dankowski, a Bachelor of <coughs> Medicine, was brought here by circumstances most unfortunate. Dankowski's life work, his theory challenging the existing notions of human mortality, is being harshly persecuted by the powers that be. Suddenly, a letter arrives from a colleague suggesting that there is previous undiscovered evidence which may support Dankowski's claims. There is a settlement, the letter says, ruled by an extraordinary man who may well be seen as objective proof of Dankowski's daring hypothesis. Grasping at straws of hope, Dankowski decides to follow what he believes to be the sign of divine providence. Without further ado, he sets off for the settlement. Late at night, Bachelor arrives in the town. As he seeks room and board, he gets to know a girl called Eva Yan and stays at her place till dawn. happening <clears throat> as of today my mission remains obscure the examination of simon kane who is rumored to be a man of incredible longevity may shake the very foundation of modern thanatology and challenge the existing notation notions of death itself however even this even if this undying leviathan proves to be more than a fairy tale the mere confirmation of his existence won't suffice to prevent the powers that be from shutting our laboratory down i need to figure out a more the most fruitful approach simon is a well-respected man and if he mistakes my interest for a front effrontery it would be nigh impossible to convince him to help me break new ground in the field of human vitality okay Day one, by the end of which the bachelor finds himself battling a truly unvanquishable foe. Okay. They're like... Oh. Okay. Weapons, clothes, 
drugs, rations, other. I have a scalpel, the durability of 50. I have gloves and nothing else. <coughs> I'm going to hold my nose standby. All right, they're sterile gloves. Good. Drugs. I have Meridorm, a painkiller, rather than a sleeping drug. Restores a small amount of health. Good for restoring length of sleep. Meridorm has strong sedative effect and induces sleep even during excruciating pain. The effect lasts five hours. Morphine, a universal opiate. Has a strong analgesic and sedative effect. Used for heavy injuries, <coughs> acute pain, and preparation for surgery. Reduces fatigue and increases health when sleeping. The effect lasts for 10 hours. Alpha tablets, outdated immunity booster. Only useful in very large doses that cause serious health damage. Oh, time is ticking away. Okay, tourniquet. Good. I have water. And kerosene. And 1400 gold. Okay. Okay, there's nothing in there. Uh, okay, then. Ah, the door. Shut it behind me. Hey, you must be Ava. I had a feeling you would come. That's creepy. Did the sounds from outside wake you too? There was a terrible groan and then something snapped loudly. I fell asleep so quickly I didn't even notice. Like, no, I heard nothing. I think there are strangers in the backyard by the pond. They're unlikely to be planning mischief, but I have a bad feeling about this. I'm afraid to go out to them. I hope they go away soon and stop disturbing our sleep. I'd like to thank you for your hospitality. Why, they, why do you think <coughs> they're not planning anything foul? <coughs> Our population is so thin. Crime is basically non-existent, especially here in the stone yard. Sometimes there are pranks, of course. Fights happen occasionally. Pe people are young here, so they often go out at night. But we're a tight community, and now I hear unfamiliar speech. That is not a good sound. I'll go take a look, but I I'm in a hurry. I must see this founding father of yours. Are you willing to trade the company of a fascinated woman for that of a dreadful old man, even if he is a sorcerer? That's so sad, but Simon won't go anywhere. He is, has always been, he always will be, even if the moon were to fall to the ground. Please stay with me a little longer. Okay. I don't know the context of this. She didn't mention anyone waiting for me. All right. Seven is a sorcerer. Are you in that much of a hurry? Do come round. The canes are asleep now. Take your knockabout coat off. Have a rest in my bed. Let me warm your hands. You're so anxious to see Simon as though your life depends on it. My life, yes. Now that my laboratory is on the brink of destruction, my whole life's pursuit depends on that remarkable man. If he really has managed to live that long, then his tissues will help me defeat death. Death. So that's the enemy you've chosen to for yourself, isn't it? Isn't it hard? I don't think anyone has managed to defeat that evil yet. Millions of doctors have defeated on singular occasions, but my enemy is more fearsome. It is death itself rather than a singular case of death. I am challenging the forces of nature. I can barely understand it myself. Could death only seem inevitable to us, but in reality be nothing more than a whim of the will that has shaped this world? That, that is the question. So where is the key to my victory? It's not far. Cain lives at the Crucible on Bridge Square. But can I have, uh, please offer you a piece of advice? Go on. Simon has two younger brothers. The eldest of the two, Gregory, has called the judge <coughs> is called judge by the locals. Visit him first. He isn't asleep. He'll teach you how to speak with Simon. <coughs> the youngest of the three is Victor. His daughter, Maria, also wanted to see you. It's probably important. Was it she who knew about my arrival beforehand? Yes, she told me about it privately. Speaking to talking to her is no simple task. Maria is a kind is that kind of person. She puts on airs, but that's how the canes are. It was Maria who told me that she would help you defeat death. That's precise wording. What a coincidence. All right. Thank you for the advice. Go, and I'll prepare everything for your turn. Do come back and speak. 
uh, after you speak to the claims. Canes. They will probably do a lot of things that will puzzle you and put you on guard. I have, I will have some advice that may be of help to you if you need it. Okay, I will come back. Okay, what is this? Mysterious Mara, Victor Kane's daughter. Crucible. Simon Kane's brother. Mansion of Greater. Okay. And I am here. Belongs to a single girl called Ava Yan. After an accidental midnight encounter provided me. Okay. Do I just like select? It's waiting for me here. Okay, I don't want to go to Simon Kane's house. I want to go to. Yeah. George, George Lee Kane. But Simon Kane, I don't want to go there. Okay. Oh. This is just a map. Okay. So I can walk around outside. Wow, this is town hall, town theater. Okay. I am sure I will find these things out as I go. So let's, is there a key to open, like, bring out a weapon? Torch, plague finder, attack, left mouse button, right mouse button. Tab, sneak, left shift, okay. Character status. List of the bound. She holds a weapon. Do not have that option. Okay, then. Oh, that thing moves. I'm going to go around this way. Well, I'm pretty sure I have to leave through that way. All right, there is some rummaging around back here. Looks a little weird. <coughs> Okie dokie. Talk to you first. The worm feels sick. Head packed, blood boiling, belly freezing. Let the worm wake up. Let him take a rest. Don't touch us. We're dangerous. Wow, these are both mean things to say. Get lost, I'm even more dangerous. No! Nope, I can't sprint. Uh. Oh no. Okay. I'm just gonna run. I have no. Um. Nobody going to help. I can't. I can't bring out. Should have quick saved. Tab. There we go. Okay, I have fists. That's the cathedral. I don't want to go to the cathedral. He's really still chasing me. Can I like go inside? Is he gonna follow me inside? No. Okay. This is a uh This is an intimidating architecture here. Something tells me that there's going to be waiting outside for me. Is there a way I could, like, check it out? All right. 
right, you have this uh, upper floor of the cathedral for reasons unknown. <coughs> okay. Time to go outside and get punched, I think. Oh, I could take the time to uh, see if I can equip my scalpel. Okay. I dropped it on the ground. Oh, good. It went away. All right. I'm at the cathedral. Uh, so there is um there is a spaceship just hovering. Oh, it's a uh, huh. The polyhedron. That's an acceptable name for that. Let's not go into the polyhedron. All right, so this is... <coughs> this is the crucible. Is there a way to like access? Diary Q. Okay. <coughs> so it says Simon Kane is waiting for me. I hope that's not the case. I hope it's George Lee Kane. Can I like hang up my coat? No. Most venerable doctor, <coughs> it is with great impatience that we have been expecting you. You need not delve into the minutiae of your business with us since our family is well acquainted with your scholarly work. You are also quite aware of the difficulties you are experiencing and well prepared to do our utmost to support you. It hurts me all the more to be the one to inform you that Simon, my consanguineous, consanguineous brother, the creator, keeper, and embodiment of all that surrounds us, has been murdered. Oh. Okay. Who did it? This is what we want to find out. With your help, Dr. Denkovsky. My microphone was not next to my mouth. I'm sorry. What do you know? <coughs> my brother was murdered last night under the strangest of circumstances. But for all the mystery surrounding his death, I'd rather eschew the notion that his death was... That his departure was connected with whatever or whoever had visited Simon that evening. The visitor is a man of laudable rectitude and an old friend of our family. There are witnesses to testify that he and Simon did nothing but converse. Who is the visitor? Someone you know quite well. The man whom your brother saw last night, or whom my brother saw last night was your colleague, Isidore Burak. Burak. He has, he was not the very, was he not the very person to advise you come here as well? <coughs> Yes. Hmm. Isidore has done more than he thinks. I have a lingering feeling that the time itself is using uncontestable powers to further its own intentions. Or that time itself. What do you think? I'm no fatalist. It could be that my mind is crowded by sorrow, but I cannot escape the feeling that your arrival is no coincidence. Your choice was made for you, my dear doctor. Let us not blame fate for it. Isidore wrote to you about... Or wrote to you without making us aware... He took a risk that could have displeased our family. Really? <coughs> Even though we were uncertain of when you would arrive, my brother was looking forward to meeting you. The tragedy may have been a consequence of the actions he took in preparation for your arrival. Someone is taking a powerful piece from the chessboard, a piece upon which your position here depended. 
It is doubly regrettable that Simon was playing on your side. You seem... You, so you presume the queen knew of the blow and sacrificed itself for a pawn. But why? Oh, okay. So it's saying, you know, why would he... This ageless sorcerer let himself be killed on my sake? Is there anything I can do to help? Do you want to help us, Doctor? Find the murderer for us. My brother Victor, who is in the wing next door, would share some of his thoughts on the matter. Help us and reward, and the reward will not disappoint you. Indeed, it seems there are too many coincidences. Your brother's murder can just as well be the murder of Bachelor Danikovsky. I will help you in what, every way I can. I mean, immort I guess he is trying to solve death itself, not just old age. <coughs> I am convinced that if there's anyone at all that can help us solve this puzzle, it is you. This mission calls for someone as astute and inventive as yourself. If Isidore was an instrument of fate, then Simon's murder is a message that fate, inten that fate intended for you personally. Do not think I am inclined to blame you for that. I am not. How do you plan on looking for the murderer? We will take our measures. The only thing I expect from you is to be yourself. Do only what you think is required. Whatever you find out, whatever you do, whatever your day turns into, everything is a clue into the solution of finding this puzzle. I repeat, everything that is happening here is happening on your account. <coughs> you have my sympathy. Okay. Alrighty then. There, a, there is an opening at the other end. Okay. So each each house has their own gate and access to the street. Okay. You have to go through there. I feel as though my blood is getting thicker. An omen, is it not? Famous Dr. Dankowski. Your arrival is a great honor for us. Victor Kane at your service. Daniil Denkovsky at yours. I foresee that things have become <laughs> ordinary for us. We'll probably make you feel uncomfortable and disturbed. I would like to compensate you for that impression. You know our small community has fallen out of the loop. It's time leaves us behind. What do you mean? I mean the traditions. Games that we play with passion that will most likely be of no interest to you. The people you meet here may seem eccentric, naive, or even somewhat deranged. Please take it easy on us. Don't judge us too strictly. I will do my best not to disappoint. I fear that Simon's death How can I help you? Symbolic event. Greg, uh, Gregory has told me everything, which is to say he told me very little, but it's enough to astound me. He maintains that you can provide a more detailed account. So you have agreed to help us. I have. May I ask why? The killer's goals to seem to align astonishingly well with the goals of those who have been waging war against my work for years. We share a tragedy. I want to exact vengeance on the one who robbed me of my work of a future. <coughs> um. Astonishingly well. Yeah, I'm prepared to answer questions that you may have. When was Simon last seen? He sent Isidore home. Then, an hour later, he came to this hall to see us. He announced his plans to withdraw the fo to the Focus and received no one. He told us not to approach the Focus for and to fast for a week, partaking of neither meat nor water. Then, in mourning, he was found dead. How was he found? <coughs> <coughs> the servants discovered him this morning, or in the morning. The room had been ransacked. Everything that was breakable had been broken. His disfigured, contorted body bore signs of ter terrible suffering. His neck was twisted, his spine broken, I think. No one has touched the body. It is currently inside the focus and will remain there for the prescribed amount of time. <coughs> what is this focus place? It's hard to explain. It's a study, if you will. An extraordinarily spacious, creative laboratory. Almost perfectly sealed off, except for the door that was visible at all times, metaphorically speaking. Okay. 
It's like an equation or a minor puzzle. Anyway, the murderer could not have been hiding there, take my word for it. While well, Simon did get in there somehow, he could perform far more impressive feats. There's a reason the whole town reveres, I mean, revered him. All right, how can I help you? Did, did Simon exist at all? Just take a look around, trust your intuition, do whatever you'd like, or speak to whoever you feel the need to. <coughs> look for the murderer, doctor, and you will find them. Keep looking till the last breath. I am sure your rational thinking will help you. Who among the townsfolk? My daughter will advise you better there. Her name is Maria. For several days, she's been obsessed with, with some design that is somehow related to your arrival. Yes, don't be surprised. She knew beforehand that you were coming. Really? That's good. Anyway. Maria believes that several bound people will play a special role in your fate. Before you leave this place, of course, perhaps uh, it is them you should ask for help first. First, I'll seek help from my dear colleague Isidore Bur uh, Barak. Where does he live? I'll show you, but you must be careful. Simon's murderer, whoever they are, could not be an ordinary person. I can't even imagine them being a person. I fear it could only be fate wearing the guise of a mysterious monster. I don't believe in fate. All right. <coughs> uh, so it's across the river, down the street, and across another river. This town has a lot of rivers. I am sick, yes. All right. Uh, so Maria is here, and I feel like rather than crossing over and coming back, I should just talk to Maria right now. Since time is ticking. All right. I'll go around this way. This makes more sense. Okay, this house is immediately different. I think I'm having fever heat. Okay. I think I'm having fever heat. You resemble adventure rather than a doctor. <coughs> Appearance of, how is it that you know me? I saw you in a dream. Don't fight yourself. My desires have nothing to do with that. I simply saw you take us all by the throat. What else did you see in that dream? I'll tell you when I think you can trust you. I hope that happens soon. The Sabarov's wait is over. Now listen I've always wanted an heir. Okay. Now listen closely. The time for your for collusion, secrets, and alliances has come. I am going to ask something of you. I am not used to that. I am used to holding the reins, but you are not harnessed, so if you would, it would be unacceptable to address you in this manner. I would find solace in the fact that my request will be welcome with you, <coughs> it fits the style of your venture. I'm not an adventurer. My job is no venture. I hope it never becomes one. I apologize if my words came across as manged and silly. I am truly not used to asking, but the nature of my request demands complete and selfless humility. Just imagine me begging and kneeling, and believe me, I do feel that way. No need to kneel. These are weird options. Like, just in general, across the game. They're weird options. Today's death was the first, but it won't be the last. Simon has opened the score of... Um, opened the score of irre... Simon has opened the score of irreplaceable victims. Soon their number will multiply. I beg you to preserve the lives of several people when the lines of their fortune cross yours. Before any of them dies, there will be a moment when you will be able to intervene. I know that for a fact. Who are these people? That doesn't matter. What was designed to happen will happen. You can be whatever you want to be, but not a coward choosing to hear no evil and run away from reality. I will give you a list of those I know of. These people are bound to you. Bound? There is a tight spring of power within each of these people. Each of them can break the routine of human existence and become something greater. They are standing on the verge of their humanity, 
gazing into the realm where they can see serve a different higher purpose without even knowing it. Moreover, they are bound to make a leap in one way or another. That is why we simply call them the Bound. How is our fate bound to mind? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not a mistress yet. The future is not as clear to me as I would prefer, but I can feel the present. I can already distinguish a dubious guess from the pulse of the precise knowledge devoid of words and images. Sorry. These people are bound to you. Their lives are connected. And I wouldn't have asked uh, you to take care of them otherwise. Are you clairvoyant or something? You sound delusional. I'm sorry, but your uncle Dessa... No. Are you clairvoyant? Ah, yes. You haven't been told, have you? It didn't even cross my mind that someone might be unaware of my abilities. No one here dares doubt them, for they are evident. Yes, the mistress of every ruling house possesses special abilities. I'm learning to see the future transform the present. <coughs> Will you comply with my quests? Will you save the lives of the people I named to you? Answer me before going back to Ava. If it is within my power, I will do my best to save their lives. Whatever happens, these people must live. Their fates are bound to mine, and they will hold the keys um, to my victory in their hands. So I need to save... Save <clears throat> Georgie Kane, Victor Kane, send some nepotism going on here, Andre Stamatin, Peter Stamatin. Maria Kena Ava Jan and Mark Immortel. That's an interesting name he has. Okie dokie. need to get across the river. What's that symbol mean? Oh, she's walking the other way. I should have talked to her. That would have been smart of me. <coughs> Alright, I need to go up, right, left, right, and I'll be at the bridge. <coughs> Man, it is dead here on a uh, 7.46 a.m. He looks drunk. Let's go with weird. Let's go with weird people. Hello, good sir. Carouser. Oh, how ferocious Mother Nature is. For it is her wrath that has to be understood. Oh, friend, if only I could let wet my whistle, I would gladly give you anything on earth in exchange for a gulp of chilly water spring. <coughs> how about we barter? How about no? Is this left? But I want to talk to more people.
Oh, I can't even go that way. My heart is crying for my poor children. How are my dearest doing? Is everything all right? Oh, woman. Woman's share is hard. Got a curious town here. Everyone's tired of endless construction work. We want some quiet. Is there a lot of construction going on? Not a lot, but I cannot shrug away the feeling that the world is changing all too quickly. The rulers invite architects from the capital and they turn everything upside down. It's fun for the children, but a torment to, to us. I'm sorry to hear that. There's more than one town here. The first is called the Bolt Project. The second one, the offspring of the project, is the districts. I mean, the residential part itself. Not so long ago, the town also dropped anchor across the river. But I wouldn't go so far as to call that part a district, too. It's just the polyhedron. Nothing, really. Children like to play there, I guess. And they say it's perfectly empty. Bare, bare as a palm of your hand. What could be inside such a monstrosity? I find it unbelievable that it's still standing at all. The industrial base of the town, the station, the warehouses, the works, and the abattoir all belong to it. I wouldn't recommend going in there. It's not an appropriate person for a uh, place for a person for the capital. <coughs> 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 it's filthy there, and the stench. I'd say it's not an appropriate one place for anyone at all. And I've hated beef for as long as I can remember. What? How can such a tiny town be divided into districts? Well, it just sort of came to be that way. The Gullet and the Guzzle, the Gorkons, tributaries, divide the town into three parts. Each of them consists of many separate courtyards, so maybe there is a reason. I see. Well, and what are those parts? The lower part, <coughs> adjacent to the abattoir, is called Earth. <coughs> the one between the Gullet and the Guzzle we call Knots, and the triangle of promontory between the Guzzle and the Gorkon is the Stone Yard. That'll do for now. Okay, so this is the gullet and the guzzle. Uh, this is the knots. I immediately forget what this is called. Good job, me. Um. Um, huh. Okay, then. This is an interesting way to construct a building. Or an interesting way for a building to fall apart. I have seven of them now. I don't know what those things are. straight, the road will turn left, and then it'll be a house between some houses. This one is the next one. Oh. Uh, how do you get to it? You have to go around the other side. That's interesting. <laughs> uh. 
Okay. I swear, if there are no doors on this house. Okay. Hello, good sir. A foul murder occurred here this night. <clears throat> no unauthorized ex access allowed. Inspecting the crime scene is strictly forbidden until... Well, you're not a local, sir, so you're unlikely to understand the loss we suffered. Isidore Burke, a great surgeon, benefactor to us all, and an all-around skilled doc. An outstanding man, b beloved and well-respected by us locals. Does it really have to always take away our very best? What a foul time we li live in. Whoever killed our only dog must surely be looking to get us all killed. Isidore could cure anything. He knew how to make cuts or incisions because he was a warden. He knew all his lines right. Like I said, it all makes sense. Whoever killed Simon took Isidore's life too. This is merely the beginning. The beginning. See, this murderous deal is all mysterious. There was a talon stuck on the victim's chest. Go ahead, bend your arm and at the elbow, good sir. Yeah, like that. There you go. That's how long it was. It broke off. There was dust on the floor. The deceased had been a renowned step walker. And all the dust was covered in hoof steps and, like, traces of sharp bone, I guess? As if someone was using a walking stick around there. I'm telling you, sir... The Shabnakadir, the clay man eater. <coughs> We've decided this post by Alexander, the head of the Subarov family. His house is in decline right now, but it's still powerful and very much respected. For it is they that's been responsible for maintaining worldly order and public safety in the town since the olden days. Please kindly address your concerns to him. There's their rod. If you take that road up there and get to the cape. As for me, I'm not authorized to let you in. I should have said so from the start. Well, that's rude. Okay. So the road around, come back in. So, Isidore's dead. Literally, all of my leads are dead. On the plus side, though, if they kill me, I don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, yeah, I do want to go this way. Is that... Am I going crazy? This fence isn't on the map right here. Okay, I'm not going crazy. Um, there is a ladder to nowhere. Why are people building in such weird ways? <sighs> Stand by. So I finally get to see you. Yes, you do look like a messenger of sorrowful times. In any case, welcome to the Rod. Our meeting is quite significant in a way. Facing the challenges with open eyes. Exchanges with open eyes and taking the first... Their first blow is my duty. Do you think we're on the verge of an especially unhappy era? <coughs> no grim events have clouded our existence since last summer. The country has cured its war wounds. Commercial communications have been repaired. Astrologers expected nothing ill. Do you hold astrologers' opinions in high regard? Sometimes I have to. I'm a ruler. Astrology can be very cautious, but I cannot allow it to influence my decisions. I have to act according to factual circumstances. Would you agree? Definitely. No, I can't stand it much longer. So you've come to meet with Simon, haven't you? What can I do with you? What for you now? I've, ac I've actually come... <coughs> I was actually invited by Isidore, so I've come to meet him with him first and foremost. But now it turns out. Uh, 
he, he, he's been murdered, yes. Look at the... Looks like the murderer was always one step ahead of you, ahead of you doesn't it? Same one that took Tavin's life, too. At least that's the conclusion suggested by the information at my disposal. Same pattern, same signature. So who did it? You wouldn't believe it. His own son. The fellow came back after being away for a long... For a while. His father had sent him to study surgery when he was but a greenhorn. Quite a lot he has learned, huh? A wandering scholar turned evil to the bone. All of that just to grab the inheritance. Wait, how'd you figure that out? <coughs> so what, did Isidore leave a fortune? In all honesty, it's hard to explain the thing to an outsider like you. Do you believe such a thing as clairvoyance? No. Well, you should get to know my wife then. Or better yet, those of us who already had the opportunities to witness the power of her prophecies. Former doubters, first and foremost. Rationalists, she got something to say to you, by the way. Not specifically, no, but it all adds up. And the circumstances of Simon's death makes me, uh, makes you wonder, too. Isidore's son arrived here last night. The timing speaks against him, but it even matches the time it takes to get from the crucible to Isidore's house. What about the motive? He's a type that needs no motive. Students these days know nothing of virtue and ethics. And a medic, too. Humans are just hairless animals to them. Or even a harmful virus infesting environment, cynical bastards. Oh, but I do apologize. I don't mean to offend you, even by extension. That's fine. I'm fed up with my students as well. The outcome was to be expected, I'm afraid. Simon was doomed. Those are volunteer patrolmen. They keep... <coughs> but I have increased the number recently to 100 and a half or so. Why do you need so many? There's unrest in, um, Termitary. If I weren't certain that Isidur had been murdered by a son, I would even consider the crime to be politically motivated. Isidur was preparing to take over the kin and become its next leader, at least according to the information I have. What is the kin? The steppe people who work in the abattoir, many of the factory workmen, an ignorant patriarchal pile that hasn't changed much in the stone, since the Stone Age. They look human enough, but if you look closer, they're just beasts. Believe me when I'm telling you that they're not snobbish or the slightest, but there's a good reason people uh, to call them that. I see. I don't think you're aware of the fact that Isidore came to me last night, just after he returned, and warned me that there were some ominous events ahead of us. I took that as an unofficial warning about his upcoming takeover. So you took measures? Um, evidently, I've mobilized the pat I've mobilized the patrols. I see what you're implying, Bachelor, but I'm not insane. Engineering Isidore's murder, as a matter of fact, a strong, independent kin under Isidore's rule would have been way more useful to me. Wow, okay. Really, why? Because that would weaken the power of the Honorable Vladislav Oligsky, who's pocketed the economy of the whole town. He'd rather see the kid as dumb as speechless heard. Come to think of it, well, I'm sure you understand where I'm going with this. This is precisely what Georgia warned me about. Oh, I am not having a good time of this headache. Okay. It's eight fifty, and I have no leads. Everyone's dead. <coughs> <coughs> my health is fine. My immunity's eh. Hunger and exhaustion are eh. Wow. Oh. Okay. Ugh. My heart is crying for my poor children. Everything will be fine. You good sir. Elvis looking man. Two massive buildings on the eastern part of Earth. The terminatory marks the district's borders. Beyond that is only the arbitoire and the steppe itself. People do not belong there. Why? Well, they just don't. It's not a people place. Some folks do. The step people, the butchers. That's way outside your area of expertise, believe me. That was, in that was intriguing, my good man. Alright, so I'm in Earth right now. The first block of the Termitry, second block of the Termitry, and then the Arbitoire.
let's go see if anything's weird. Man, I might have to call this stream off, though. Who would have thought an open world RPG would be a bit much for me to handle at the moment? Nine o'clock. way to get around. Yes, there is. It's not even a door. Okay. Hello. We know all about you. <coughs> what are you so unhappy about? We're almost caught the unseen cat. Want to come see her? Definitely. I want to see this unseen cat. Oh. The soul and a half has got an opportunity to catch their breath. This is good. Now everyone will have the time to pray. Otherwise we'd have to mourn our boys and the halves would be orphaned. Okay. It's a catchy name. Notkin says it's because each of them has a familiar. A cat, a dog, a crow, or a grass snake. Half a soul, more than a normal person. Or a normal animal. Is that a game? It's a lifestyle that's larger than life. If you join the soul in the house, you have to adopt a pet and raise it. As you raise it, you change. That's when it's grown. Then when it's grown, it gets the other way around. Your half begins to take care of you. And so you are always together, bound forever. And what if the enemy die animal dies? I do not know. No half has ever died before. What kind of soul in a half are you if you're familiar can die? They wouldn't take you in the first place. Animal lifespan isn't that long. Oh, okay. Okay, that, those roots look like a dead person. And yet again. Huh. Let's not, but say we did. <coughs> okay. Where to? Uh, let's cut back across to my house. these houses. Hello, old girl again. The Sh Shabnak don't have any soul at all. Perhaps the Nod could have finally done it. He used to make fun of the old legends, taunted the step, played spirits. Perhaps Shabnak has come to show him, him his place. 
it's a lot. <coughs> it's a lifestyle that's larger than life. If you join the soul in the half, so you have to adopt a pet. The animal dies naturally. Okay. Don't know what the, the, those things on the top left of the screen are. It concerns me that I don't know. Hello, good sir. Got a smoke. Tell me about yourself. I'm a factory worker. Owner treats us like dirt, though. Uh, well, it got me my own house. Otherwise, I'd have been stuck in that husk with the rest of them. Not, no going out, not even to buy bread. You just sit there gnawing at what you stockpiled beforehand. They're completely off their rocker. What are you talking about? The termitary. And why? For what sins? Did we not handle the workload well enough? That might be so, but still, what are we to do now? Nah, home is best. Feels nice to have one. <coughs> I can appreciate that. Moreover, living as a commune is warmer, yeah. Mutual support, team spirit, and all that. But when you've got one bite and a thousand miles, one gulp and a thousand throats, support becomes irrelevant. They're starving and therefore getting weak. You don't seem to be starving here. We don't seem to be. How about you take off your big city goggles, eh? Just peek inside the termitary. You'll turn your nose up at this, at it in a split sec. That's where they seem to be starving, all right. The train is two weeks off schedule. Yeah, it works fine for them prov um, provident squirrels. The rest are on their hunkers. Sounds like the squirrels had it right. Uh, does look like this is the way. I'm a lawyer and animals, dirty of image, drink from the river. Us proud men deserve dr to drink spring water. Tis brought here in barrels, but they're often empty when I get... <coughs> I'd get it from there, but I'm out of bottles. I'd drink, I'd drink straight out of a fountain, but I'm going to faint. The air is, here is too spicy. I'm barely walking as it is. They're not blooming, Professor. They're withering. Withering and thence producing a general laying hour. Our people people fall dead without sleep like leaves from a branch, all because of the surplus of juices. Maybe not. I'm not really a science guy. Oh, I've been a woeful wretch, Professor. A wretch that has suffered all too much. My condolences. An empty bottle is required for the pump. All right, the theater is here. <laughs> Hello. Hey, don't mess with us. We know a thing or two about life. Why well, so <coughs> it has begun. A crushing blow to the soul and a half is being prepared. There are almost 70 dog heads. No one will escape the doom. <coughs> it means the end of the soul and a half's domination in Earth. <coughs> Nutkin will have to s sweat to break free of the jo dog's jaws. Who is Nutkin? You will know when the time comes, if he is still alive by then, that is. A game to some, destiny to others. I hope you avoid manslaughter. Tell me about the polyhedron. It's where the youngest Cain, Casper styled Khan, has fortified. There are more than a thousand children up there now. Almost every child in town went to the polyhedron, except for urchins, orphans, and bold daredevils like me. Are you trying to tell me they live there? Well, uh, the older ones do. The younger kids just come to, come to play. But yesterday, everyone who was older than three and, y and younger than 15 had a huge gathering there. They're hiding. From fate, Bachelor. From fate, yeah. Good luck for them. Okay. Crude sprawl. Bah, the most rotten place ever. The soil breeze there as though it could swallow you whole. Real bog. How do I get there? Simple. When they tell you to go to hell, just choose any direction. When you found the worst place in the world, that's it.
It's in Earth. <coughs> the southern, the southernmost eastern district that borders the abattoir. Its other end is joined by the cemetery. Rar. Thanks. I do not know of what he, he is speaking. Okay. Let's go to this theater. Something tells me this is the theater that we were in when we started the game. And it's locked. Okay. Uh, so let's turn right. Hello, good sir. The warehouse is a district as well, right? It is, but there's not much to tell about it. It consists of two parts. The first part is where everything that the town that ex exports is stored. Meat, sausage, ham, bones, and so on. The other one stores various hardware and the other manufactured goods that the regular train delivers. How do I get there? That's a nuts. It's southeasternmost part, to be precise. To the east of the station. The meat warehouses are the ones close to the station. The hardware are the ones close to the town. There's a railroad track running between them. Okay. This is the railway station. This must be the warehouses. The castle of Solon Haves, the warehouse where the urchins under Chieftain Notkin reside. I'm guessing Notkin is somewhere in the arbitoire. He sounds like the uh <coughs> the leader of the step people. <coughs> Ouch. <coughs> Alright, forward and then to the right. There should be stairs descending past that wall. There's the uh, weird building. Or a weird building. Because I believe we walked up that one and came across here and that weird building was right there. <coughs> so this is a separate weird building. Curious town here. Is there a lot of construction? I haven't seen something like it in a long time. Okay, so this must be the construction. Of course it does. Estates never lacking, and the constant construction provides workplaces. Still, we want some quiet. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, there's a bridge under construction. Is it being constructed weirdly, too? That's 10 o'clock, right? Yes. Okay, ladders do not work. Oh, it's more like a, not a bridge, it's a, like a levee. Or a dam to keep the water, I guess. My house right there. Well, not mine. <coughs> have I tried talking to you? Halt! I'm going to have to teach you about the technicalities of the setting. The time and place. It's not essential, but that's how it works. The actor has to be prepared before he goes on stage or else he'll fall down and stumble upon the prompt box. That would look mighty silly. Time flies by. It can't be stopped or turned back. Nights follow days, which are followed by nights. Things happen without any regard for whether you're there to witness them. Don't expect Andrew to wait for you. Most events can be missed. And so it would make sense to you to visit places that you care about regularly. You'll find people that play ma major roles in your fate there. They stand out from the common folk. The rest are just a crowd shot, a background, a bunch of extras. As it has always been. Indeed. Still, it is best to avoid hasty judgment. It's a paradox, you see. Don't try to care too much for the lives of these bound-to-stand-out people. And don't be too dismissive. 
of the silent crowd. Both extremes will end in tragedy. Why is that? The world cares for your reputation. A fine and crucial instrument. Your reputation changes the world you see, for it is a mirror, wouldn't you agree? And a bad reputation can get you in a lot of trouble. For example, oh, I need to describe. You've got a vivid imagination. Everything changes from mystical aspects to mundane things, like the people you need treating you badly. How many enemies you've got, the higher, how high the prices rise, how bad your dreams are, lots of things. A sorry prospect, how do I maintain my reputation? Really? It's not even a question. Same as anywhere. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not betray. Do not steal. Do not covet. Don't be an asshole. Do, do not get caught. These rules are the same everywhere. A truly selfless deed, like risking something for thy neighbor, or even a person who lives quite far away, can help in a quite dire situation. I see. <coughs> Really? Good for you, then. As for me, I can't see in anything in this mask. I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, don't get too worked about human lives. And don't put too much stock in another's word, mine included. He who trusts everyone is asking to be deceived. Yet he who trusts no one is deluded. That's a kick-ass mask, and I want it. What about you? Do you have anything to add? Federal Bachelor, please be so kind as to linger for a moment. This conversation won't take much of your time, especially since time stops during dialogues. At least during the important ones, and our dialogue is extremely important. Do you know how to play? You need to know how to play, don't you? Who are you? <coughs> Poor tragedy. Traged Tragedian? Tragedian. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Or how to emphasize, em emphasize it. <laughs> If you please, a victim of circumstances just like you. You're mistaken. I'm the director, the person in charge of the situation, not a random actor. Of course you weren't. You are a living, breathing man, as evident from your condition and statuses. You, are, you experience hunger, thirst, and fatigue. You suffer from pain, wounds, and disease. You are so lifelike. You have to eat, drink, sleep, and rest. And that, and to make mistakes. The latter... <coughs> if I may point out how important it is to keep an eye on your condition. If you get dizzy or unnaturally sluggish, do have it checked up. Vital processes tend to run faster during emergencies than in everyday life. I know a person who died of stress, but it was diagnosed with starvation. I need our remind a wise man like you of the fact that hunger is stated with food. Hunger, food can be found in shops, or sh and shops can be found in ordinary houses that are marked with specific signs. Sleep, however, is more complicated. People only sleep in beds and only in private residences around here. I'm sorry, but that's just how our world is. And quite silly, if you forgive me for saying so. Speaking of commerce, different shops sell similar items at different prices. Make sure you don't get cheated. People can be quite brazen around here. You can also barter with folk out in the street. Some things may be nothing more than trinkets to you, but others would be willing to part with their life's bl blood for them. Yes, blood. It is not my place to lecture you, but if, following your Hippocratic Oath, you ever consider easing someone's pain, feel free to just approach them with a suitable drug. You will see the pain recede before your very eyes. The sick will fall asleep when they're close to the sick fall asleep when they're close to recovery, don't they? Or when they're close to their ultimate rest. Still, helping the hopeless will grant you a good reputation. You'll be seen as a benefactor willing to part with a precious sleeping draught or a painkiller for a simple bystander. Anything else? Nope. No, not yet. <coughs> I should have talked to them before. My <sighs> bedroom. The ominous thing outside the Who could you see at a time like this? Since you've decided to fight death, you'll have to be very careful. It's September. You will be dying with every breath of air. We are all dying every second of our lives. Is that annoying phenomenon that I've challenged? But since you've heard of Fanatica's achievements, I'm not going to waste your time monologuing. What does September have to do with it? The steppe is full of various herbs. <coughs> they fill the air with, <coughs> with dizzying vapors. White whip, twire, and swevery are dangerous in August and September when herbs surrender their juices to the sun. People tend to get headaches this time of year. Heart sufferers lie in bed with pains. My heart aches too. How do you people live here? Twire is a rare herb, so it is usually bearable. This year it is unbelievably plentiful. The elders say that it is phenomenal. Nothing like this has happened before. They think it is a bad omen. Well, I don't believe that. But the air is drowning. Can you feel it? Yes, the air is heavy. You need to sleep often. Never go hungry. Drink more water. You need to look after yourself properly. If you get sick, forget everything else and get some rest. Otherwise, you may die of a heart attack and bleeding. Be careful, all right?
Okay. So I think that is it for the introduction to this game. Uh, yeah, it's good to know. Uh, I'm going to save and go lie down. Because, uh, just, just life and illness. Have a good day if you've been watching. If you haven't been, have a good day anyway.